So Techmine put up this video the other week called A Common Yet Unseen Device. It was a telephone exchange announcer which has a tape loop that has a lot in common with uh, the tape loops on tape echo devices much like the Roland Space Echo to name a uh, one. Anyway this device has a nearly around a minute long tape loop in the top of it. It doesn't have reels or anything like that just to improve reliability because the thing is if you look at it it's actually quite hard for that thing to get taffled up. They, they won't be able to bend or anything it's actually quite an ingenious way of doing things. In the video Tecmo managed to get the machine up and running however it wasn't actually sending out any audio. He managed to hear what was on the tape by plugging the tape cartridge straight into some other amplifiers however getting the audio out of the machine was still a bit of a mystery. So I got in contact with Tecmo to see if I was able to sort of do a video on it to try and get it going and plug it into my telephone exchange stuff and after getting a go ahead from Neil, Neil's garage was where this uh, item was stored for the past couple of decades. Well I trotted off over and managed to strike one thing off my bucket list which was meeting Techmone as well as uh, picking up this announcer. We met at a service station to take it out of his boot and put it into my boot and I had a 20 minute chat and yeah what a lovely fella. Anyway I picked it up a week ago and this video is documenting the technical journey I've had over the past week with it. So here it is the magical piece itself I've already taken the front off. In the video Techmone explained that the motor wasn't working it just needed a little bit of a nudge to get running and that is happy days. We can see it running anyway. So it is working, well the motor's working at least. The cut for the loop is right there, you might see it. Oh, oh it's going through now. And now the other end has a little kink on it. Uh, so that's where the uh, loop connection is. So it's still running, which is happy days. However, there were problems with the sound, so we need to figure that out. So the next step is to open it up. Luckily it's nice and serviceable in the field so uh, everything comes apart. It's just connected by a few connectors here and there. I'm going to remove this for a sec. If you look in there you can see all of the parts. So this is the amplifier board and the power supply. Um, the rear of the connector is right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is figure out where all of these wires are going. So if you've watched Techmine's video, you'll know that there are two outputs on the front. I uh, gather these are for testing at the exchange, but on the back is actually the connection that is connected to all of the other pieces of equipment. And with this specific model, which was a mid 80s one, well, it's got this funky port right here, which you may recognize. Oh, I see. Okay, okay. These two gray wires right here, this one right here and this one right here, seems to go in to the power supply uh, connector. So I'm guessing there's a switch in here that would maybe switch on and off these. Oh yeah, here we go. So this definitely looks like the relay that controls the whole shebang. With any luck, this relay should still relay things. So at this point of time, I didn't have a massive amount of information on this thing, so I figured the next best thing to do was to mock up a little cable that we connect into here so we can make a breakout box so we can plug whatever we need to uh, plug into this thing. Now I could put another connector on the other side and go to town, but I'm not going to bother. I'm going to make this quite a short cable because I always need this stuff anyway. Skizzors! So I've just built this, it's a breakout for it, just a piece of ribbon cable that's been broken out onto a bit of strip board. So when I finished putting that breakout board together, I was looking on a Strouger telephone exchange forum and somebody actually picked up one of these when they saw Techmoan's video on it a couple of weeks ago. No idea where they found it because these things are pretty sparse but pretty awesome. Theirs was working and they were able to listen to the audio straight from the front jacks. And if you'd seen Techmoan's video, well you know that isn't the case with this one. So uh, yeah, there's obviously something wrong with it. Alas, it seems that there may be a little bit of a problem. It just doesn't seem to play. I'm just gonna have a look because there's a couple of missing capacitors here. So I decided to start having a bit of a poke around and do some testing here and there and see where the problem was. So the 12 volts which is coming out of this adjustable power supply, which I'm guessing this circuit board could be the capacitor, that could be gone. Um, 14 volts. It's going incorrect. 14 volts AC is going into this power supply. However, um, we have got zero volts coming out of this power supply. All well, the problem's in this little box. So I took this little circuit board out to take a closer look. What this circuit board is supposed to do is take 14 volts AC and send out 12 volts DC. However, it was sending out pretty much zero volts. So there was a problem here. If you see there, there's a couple of dark spots. These are directly under some resistors. So these resistors were getting a little bit too hot. These 
these resistors were going over to the capacitors, which made me figure that these capacitors weren't capacitating. So I decided the first port of call was to replace those resistors and those capacitors and see how it went. I just want to find out if it's going to work. So I've got these slightly, oh God, they're way oversized. I'm just going to do it anyway. I'm going to give it a go anyway. Let's see if we can get this working, shall we? Oh, it's down. Luckily, that was the problem because if it was the transistors, there were some weird obsolete things that were hard to get hold of. And I was sort of preparing myself to make a strip board replacement for this power board, but luckily, the capacitors were the problem. Woo, phew. Right, now that is done, we can get back to the breakout module. So now it's working, but also. <laughs> So what I was doing there was I was sending 50 volts into the relay. 50 volts is the standard in telephone exchanges. So I figured out the pinout for that and what that relay does is it basically triggers that solenoid that pushes that pinch roller up to make the tape move. The tape is really worn and if you can hear there, it does still sound like it did in tech modes where it's like mm -hmm. I'm just gonna quickly jot out where the pins go using a continuity tester. And yes. So I've just bashed together this project box. It's got a little gap there for the uh, thing. You'll notice there's loads of extra space. So, oh no, don't tell me I've done it upside down. Oh, he's only got to done it upside down. <laughs> oh, what a plonker. Ah, oh, that's annoying. Well, it's going to be upside down. So now the announcer seems to work and I've broken out all of the cables and the breakout box. Let's try and plug it in to the telephone exchange. So now I have the announcer here with the breakout box. Uh, the breakout box is wired up to a phone line thing. This is just a temporary thing because we're going to need to be a little bit more involved in this in a little bit. There's a phone socket on the back. We need to phone that with this thing right here. Let's just put this down here, leave it off the latch. Okay, let's do it. Five, seven, eight, six. This is calling, we're gonna put this down here. So the way this is wired up, the second I plug this in, it's actually gonna answer the call. So now we turn on the announcer. Now with any luck, when we listen on this phone, we should hear the announcer going through the telephone exchange. The cord you have there is no longer available. Please be aware your number using the full SCD code as shown in your phone booth. So now we know if we plug the announcer in through the telephone exchange, well, the audio is literally just gonna go straight through into the earpiece. But we're not out of the woods yet. We need to figure out how to make it work without having to plug it in every time and you know having it constantly running. So I did a lot of reading up on pretty much all of the documentation that I built up over the last couple of months on the telephone exchange to kind of figure out the best course of action uh, for the next step. All right, so let's draw this bugger. I came up with a super lo-fi solution that should hopefully work, only involving one extra relay per audio channel on the announcer. I mentioned my progress on the telephone exchange forum that I've mentioned before, and people were extremely helpful, suggesting various different methods of the way that they've made it work in the past. And it was suggested I should probably add a couple of bits of protection, but in the end of the day, it was mentioned if it works, it works. It wouldn't have flown in a normal telephone exchange uh, because there's no protection and you know, it's just not what it would have been done. But this is a museum, it's not a 24 7 telephone exchange so a bit of fun a lo-fi solution if it works it works what comes from the switches let's say the big final switch the one that calls it calls the last number well it actually calls the last two numbers of the phone line well what it sends out two call lines is the pair that wires up to your phone and there's also a p wire the p wire which is the private wire is the one that sort of tells other things that hello hello are you listening to me uh, so this is it right here the p wire is right here the 1300 
Metrodome relay, which I've got something that sort of does that right here. This is gonna have three switches on it, basically. It's just this simple one that goes from the power into the relay inside of the announcer machine, that thing that I was clomping on and off earlier. That, those are gonna flick on as well. So then the announcer will send the audio over. So what I need to do is find a relay section that's got three switches on it. If you look at this relay right here, it's got two sets of switches on this side that are connected. That could be these two. And on this side, it's got another connector which is going to connect up the relay. So I need to take this coil out of there and pop it into here. So I went ahead and made a Frankenstein relay. This is probably not the thing to do, but uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? The next step was getting this relay and somehow putting it into the telephone exchange. Also off eBay a couple of months ago, I got this blank cradle. In fact, I think these were both from the same seller, I think. Pop a couple of isolators in, pop one of these on. I went ahead and did a shoddy wiring job that would probably make any telephone engineer vomit, but what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do if it works? It works! Right now, please remember, I'm still figuring this telephone exchange malarkey out. I've only really even known they've existed for about two months now, but you know. So uh, what I've done now, is I've got the relay box right here and I've wired it rather ropely with this ropey wire over to the back. If you look at the back, there's this chunky set of connections and we'll look at these closely in a little bit because we're gonna take this project a little bit further. But all you need to know right now is I have wired this purple wire into the P wire on level one outlet three, which means it's wired up to the switch bank on level one output three, which is right here and right here because there's two sets of switches so that means when this final selector gets up to level one outlet three uh, this is hopefully going to make this relay do its relay thing so how we do that is we make the phone call first up we need to call the first numbers that are assigned to the first three which is a uh, five uh, seven uh, eight And now we're on this final switch. You'll notice it's a lot bigger because what this final one does is it chooses uh, where it needs to allocate. This will be in, these will all be in different telephone exchanges, for instance. This would send it straight over to another one. But this one, what we need to do is we need to type it into one, which is only gonna flip it up one section. And now we need to type in three, which makes it go over to the pin that we want. So now I know this relay is going to do the job on that phone number, 57813. So now I need to connect all of the other connectors onto this rear uh, kind of point, and then we'll also connect all the outputs that connect up to this thing right here. So as you can see, there are designated chunks here and there are actually numbers, you can't quite see them on top saying like level one, level two, level three, level four. And this is the levels, uh, how, how where the actual switches lift up to on the switch bank. And all of these little connect collections of four different connectors, you'll see here it says even and odd and then it's got M, P, minus and plus. These are all designated to the uh, switch cradle. In fact, here is an example. Uh, ignore this top row, this is a different type of switch switch bank, but uh, basically how this works is these are coordinates of uh, these different switch banks. You'll see that there are different contacts on the top and the bottom. These different levels that go along, chunk, 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 are the different levels that go up. So level one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Uh, there we go. And then all of these odd and even, these uh, connection, collections of four are actually the switches that uh, are selected. So you're basically selecting coordinates on the bank. So these three wires that I need for the announcer are connected to level one. So it's level one right here, these chunks. So this is the first set of contacts in that bank. And then the next one is the third set of contacts because it's odd. So it goes one, two, three, four, and so on. So the purple is the private wire. That's the one that says, hello, is anybody there? And then these two are the actual connectors that are gonna be connecting the audio through the switches. So I'm gonna get these wires going through this hole right here. So it's nice and neat. This bit right here is actually the poles that connect to the relay bank that we're gonna be talking to the announcer right here. So we need to get these over to here in a neat fashion. There we go, nice. So now I've also got to get some wires going out of this that go over to the announcer. As you can see they're here, number this one, this one, and this one. So I need to connect these to the back. Oops, forgot to put the relay set on. Oh, what a problem. <coughs> oh, here we go. 
Oh no. I forgot to add an earth connection. Okay, attempt number four, maybe three or something. I, I did a load of stupid rookie errors. For starters, it wasn't even plugged into the back of the uh, uh, announcer. What a plonker. One. Okay, here we go. Hey, just got a dodgy relay. Yes! Oh, it blooming works. I am so pleased with that. Right, I'm gonna sort out all of these wires and then we're gonna have a look at trying to replace this tape so we can conserve this because it's nearly at it. So this announcer has the ability of having two different announcements on it at any one time. So what I did is I made another relay circuit so another telephone number can be called in to hear another completely separate announcement to the other one. So you could call up one announcement or you can call up the other one. The way it does that is on this stereo tape loop, the left channel is one announcement and the right channel is another announcement. In this instance, with this rather warm and muffly tape loop, well, the other side is completely empty. So it seems like a perfect opportunity to focus our attention onto the actual tape loop itself and make a new version to stop this one from getting any more worn out and to also add another announcement onto the other channel. And that's where this reel-to-reel -reel comes in. Back in the day, somebody's job would have been to record the announcements onto a reel-to-reel -reel player like this and then distribute the uh, tape to make tape loops out of. And I think Tecmo mentioned one of Neil's jobs entailed something like this. So what I've done is I've recorded two announcements onto this tape reel, one on the right channel and one on the left channel. The one on the right channel is the original one. I've just tried to EQ it a bit so it's a little bit clearer. The is no it's a little bit clearer, but funnily enough, when it goes through the phone, it actually sounds a lot better. So even if it's muffled, you can actually hear what she's saying. As for the other announcement that I've recorded on this tape, well, I hired a pretty dodgy uh, person off the internet to do this one. So uh, have a listen what you think to this one. The code you have dialed is no longer available. Please redial your number using the full STD code as shown in your phone book. There will be no extra charge to the call. If further assistance is required, please ring operator services. Yeah, how cool is that? So we've got Techmoan uh, repeating the announcement. So now the plan is when you call up one number, you can listen to Techmoan, and you call up the other number, you listen to the original. And of course you can listen to both of them at the same time. The code you have dialed is no longer available. Please redial your number using the full STD code as shown in your phone book. Here, yeah, now what we need to do is find the start. So that's the start of it. So now we know where we need to cut the start of the tape loop. So I'm going to cut it about here. You're not supposed to do it like that. You're supposed to do it like this. Don't do it like that. Do it like this. So now I've cut the end of it off with a Stanley knife. Now we've got to find the other end. <laughs> Right, we're at the end, so I'm just going to pull it a little bit further through. Right, so here we go, tape loop time. You're not supposed to do it like that, you're supposed to do it like this. No, that's awful, you don't do it like that, no, 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 no. You can't do it like this. So now we've got a tape loop, it doubles up as a lovely fashion accessory, but now we've just got to get it put into the announcer. Right, let's do this, shall we? Let's remove the top covers. Whoop. Oop. So we're going to remove this one first. Oh, oh. Get it all a little bit in order here. And now we've got to put the next one in. Oh gosh, this is going to be a nightmare. I'm just keeping an eye out for any, uh, any taffles. Like right now. The tape loop that I've made is slightly longer than the original, so it's a bit, it might be a bit of a squeeze. But, it's looking good, it's looking good. 
Oh. And now we go. Oh, we're, the, we're nearly there. Oh, it's just stuck. There we go. <laughs> it's in. Number using the full hey. password in your phone book. Yeah. There will be no extra charge to the call. If further assistance is required, please ring operator services. Right, there's that one. There's uh, channel one. Okay, we're in luck. Now let's go and get this plugged in and see if we can get it all working as it should do. The code you have dialed is no longer available. Please redial your number using the full STD code as shown in your phone book. There will be no extra charge to the call. If further assistance is required, please ring operator services. One thing I forgot to mention in the video was I initially recorded a tape loop at the wrong speed. I recorded it as slow because I thought that, you know, the telephone exchange, they weren't that bothered about uh, uh, the quality. So make a slower tape loop to increase the durability. But I was wrong. Sounded like a chipmunk. <laughs> And also not to mention you can call in on the announcer, well with any phone really, at some point I'm going to actually have an external input uh, so you'll be able to phone into the museum and also listen to Tecmo and Andy and other announcers so I can call it from any phone in the museum which is which is cool. So that worked out pretty well I'm quite pleased about that. There's going to be another video in a few days on the Museum of Everything Else YouTube channel about how this is going to be displayed and set up and stuff. You might be able to even come over and see this in the next couple of weeks depending how this whole Covid stuff plays out. Check the Museum of Everything Else website for more information on that. But this isn't the end of the story for the announcer 9A in this video. No, these announcer 9As actually had a number of other uses. So I've been sharing the progress on multiple videos over on Patreon on this in the last week. And there was a comment from Steven Anderson mentioning the dial a disc. This is a piece of technology that you used to be able to phone in and listen to like the number one at that point in time. So you would call up and it would be like, you know, the, like the human league or something. He mentioned a story that back in 1983, his mum let him phone in every so often and call up the dial a disc. And the thing that got me thinking was the fact that he mentioned that it started at random points in the song. He shared a link to a website that had this image of dial a disc on it. And funnily enough, what you're looking at there is a similar setup to what we actually have uh, right here. There's a record player in the middle. You would put the song record on there and then you'd set the reel to reel to record that song from the record player. And then you'd make a tape loop out of that and put that in one of the announcer 9As, which was situated at the bottom of the rack. So amazingly enough, dial a disc was one of these as well. I thought it was something else, so there you go. Another thing that Stephen mentioned before we connected the dots in the comments was the fact that he heard the dial a disc was reused from the technology used to read out the cricket scores. So the announcer 9A was probably reading out cricket scores on the phone as well. So these things were even more prevalent than you might have thought. Some of you are probably thinking and about to comment saying, Sam, put a song on one of these instead. Well, we're gonna actually be doing that with another piece of technology technology that's reasonably similar to this in another video. But for now, for this video, I think we've covered enough on the announcer 9A. Also, it's worth mentioning an amazing piece of technology that has a similar purpose to this. It's the speaking clock that was uh, on the other side of the telephones. That was an arrangement of optical audio discs. Truly an amazing piece of technology. And uh, yeah, I don't know whether I'm ever going to come across one of those, but it's worth a look into. Anyway, that's pretty much it for this video. If you want to support these projects and the constant creation of these videos, then please 
please go and check out on Patreon or YouTube membership. There's also a handful of audio bits from this that I've included over there that you can download. Amongst loads of other samples and sounds and this, that and the other. And you can watch back all the builders live streams and the vlogs on the trials and tribulations of projects like this, trying to get these things working throughout the week. As well as seeing loads of other projects and stuff and getting your name on a knob. I'm going to be doing a public live stream within the next week, uh, putting the rest of the uh, patrons names on the knobs in the museum. So if you want your name on a knob, then uh, yeah, go and check it out over there. Anyway, I want to thank Techmoan. This is the announcer 9A. I'm Luke Mumno Computer. If you like what you see, don't forget to subscribe and yeah, don't be scared to try it.